Beauty and the Beast director Bill Condon did a great job adapting Disney's classic animation into a live action movie, but during the editing process some intriguing moments got cut, including some funny battle scenes in the castle and a very different take on the song Days in the Sun. Yippee ki movie lovers, it's Jan here, and with the Blu-ray of Beauty and the Beast out now, I'm going to break down all the official deleted scenes and discuss the many Easter eggs and callbacks to the original animated movie, as well as other details we never got to see in the theatrical release. I'm also starting a new giveaway on this video. For a chance to win this gorgeous hardback book, Tale as Old as Time, The Art and Making of Beauty and the Beast, just subscribe and leave a comment about the movie and also make sure you answer the question I'll be asking later in the video. By the way, obviously there are spoilers ahead if you haven't seen the movie. During the battle between the enchanted objects and the villagers at the Beast's castle, there's a funny little moment that was cut with the village lasses. The scene shows the lasses armed with pitchforks chasing Chip and Fru-Fru through the castle and into the kitchen, which is where Cuisinier, the castle chef turned stove, covers them in treacle and feathers and they run off screaming. This scene is actually a lovely callback to the original animated movie where Le Fou and two other men with assorted weaponry race after the castle's enchanted footstool who's stolen one of Le Fou's shoes until they're threatened away by the kitchen's fiery stove. Also deleted from the battle at the castle is a scene where Lumiere is attacked by one of the female villagers and Cogsworth comes to his friend's rescue, sliding down the banister and shooting the villager in the butt. However, when she turns around, Cogsworth is shocked to find the person he shot is Clotilde. Now if you remember, at the end of the film, when the enchanted objects turn back into human servants, we discover that Clotilde is actually Cogsworth's wife, and that he's definitely not happy to be reunited with her. Which explains why in this deleted scene, Cogsworth continues to fight her off with a sword even after he knows who she is. Again, this deleted scene is a delightful throwback to the original animation, where Cogsworth saves Lumiere from being melted by Le Fou. In that animated scene, Cogsworth chooses between a pistol and a pair of scissors, and comes barreling down the banister, stabbing Le Fou in the butt with the scissors, using them like a sword. In the final live-action film, Plumette strikes Le Fou in the face with her feathers, but we don't see what happens next. The section cut from the movie after that shows Le Fou rushing after Plumette and catching her in a net. However, Lumiere comes to her rescue when he uses his candles to burn Le Fou's butt. In the animated classic, it's not Le Fou, but one of the other villagers who's mistreating the enchanted duster by plucking out her feathers. But again, Lumiere saves the day by torching the villagers behind. During the mob scene at the castle, Le Fou continues to question his allegiance to Gaston, and in a humorous deleted scene, he hides away from the fighting in one of the castle's many rooms. Unfortunately for Le Fou, the room he picks is an enchanted bathroom, where a new character called Monsieur Toilette drenches him with water, which sends Le Fou rushing off screaming. Then at the end of the film, when the household objects transform back into human beings, there's another deleted scene where actor Stephen Merchant appears playing Monsieur Toilette, just standing there, clothes wet and dirty, mouth agape, basically completely horrified by what he's been through during the curse. When Le Fou arrives, he identifies Monsieur Toilette due to the terrible odour, and asks him what he's going to do now, to which he replies, brush my teeth. And if you're wondering why all these little moments I've been talking about so far were cut from the end movie, it was really a question of both timing and taste, as according to director Bill Condon, the movie was running long and some of the humour was considered a bit lowbrow in comparison to the rest of the film. There are some lyrics missing from the mob song in the live action film compared to the animated movie. The missing section would have fit into the film just after Gaston consults the beast's magic mirror to check where the castle is, and it features the villagers making their way through the woods while singing the lines, We don't like what we don't understand, in fact it scares us, and this monster is mysterious at least. Bring your guns, bring your knives, take your children and your wives, we'll save our village and our lives, we'll kill the beast. Then straight after those words, the deleted scene shows the villagers breaking down the ice gates that lead up to the castle. This shot of the villagers storming through the broken gates is beautiful and kind of symbolic, as it looks like they're walking through the jaws of a beast. I can see why Bill Condon was sad to cut the scene, though he did so as he was aware of the film's running time, and also felt it downplayed the tension of the moment. A scene that was cut from the movie's opening section shows Belle giving the beggar woman Agatha some bread and jam, which she's very grateful for. 
It's just a small moment between these two characters who we don't see interact during the final film, and it highlights Belle's kind and compassionate nature, and it also emphasises how different she is from the other villagers, who treat Agatha unkindly like an outsider. And on top of that, this deleted scene may also go some way to answering the question of what happened to the baguette that Belle bought from the baker, which was in her dress pocket during the opening song one minute, but mysteriously disappeared the next. It would have been nice to see a bit more of Agatha in the movie, because her character is rather important, after all, she is the Enchantress in disguise. And if you'd like to learn more about the secrets of the Enchantress in this movie, then check out my video on that very subject by tapping in the top right of the screen. After the townspeople throw Belle's soaking wet clothes all over the ground because they don't like her new laundry cleaning invention, there's a scene that was cut from the film which shows Gaston arriving, blasting his gun for the crowd to make way and telling them they're behaving badly and should go home. While this may seem on the surface like a decent thing to do, as usual Gaston has his own best interests at heart, and those interests involve convincing Belle to marry him so that he can have what he believes he deserves, the best wife in town. It's always fun watching Luke Evans play the incredibly arrogant but ultimately clueless Gaston, and I love the line he says to LeFou after he tells the crowd to leave. I'm not sure what's going on here, but I'm pretty sure I just fixed it. However, I can see why this scene was cut, as it doesn't add anything particularly new or revelatory to what we learn at the start of the movie about the characters of Belle and Gaston and their attitude and feelings towards one another. The musical Number Days in the Sun was a new song introduced in the live-action movie. However, there is an alternate version of the song which begins with the Beast dreaming of his mother singing to him when he was lying in bed as a young boy. In this alternate version, the Prince's mother sings the first part of the song, saying she'll never leave him until her own life is done. Now, the middle of this deleted version is the same as in the final film, but at the end of the cut version, the Prince's mother has died in her bed, and her young son watches over her until he's pulled away by his father. This original version had to be partly reshot, after it was discovered that test audiences were mixing up actress Harriet Jones, who plays the Prince's mother, with Hattie Morahan, who plays Agatha, aka the Enchantress. Because of this confusion, the scene was changed with Harriet Jones' role cut back to a non-singing part where she just lay dead in the bed while the prince looked on. And in the refilmed scene, she also had dark rather than blonde hair to further differentiate her from the character of the Enchantress. Also, the prince's part was recast with a young actor who could sing, as he now had to sing the first few lines of the song as it appears in the final film. It's a real shame the original version wasn't used, as actress Harriet Jones has such a lovely singing voice, and that version packs an even stronger emotional punch, because the young prince's mother sings to him that she'll never leave him, but by the end of the song she's dead and he's asking why she left him. Plus, the alternate version gives at least one real moment on screen for the prince's mother, whereas her time on screen in the final film was reduced to almost nothing. I feel like instead of altering this scene, they could have simply refilmed it as it was, but changing the colour of the mother's hair to make the difference from the Enchantress even clearer. So what do you think about the deleted scenes, and were there any you think should have been in the movie, and which animated Disney film are you most looking forward to seeing made into a live action movie next? To enter the giveaway for this gorgeous hardback book, Tale as Old as Time, The Art and Making of Beauty and the Beast, make sure you're a subscriber, and leave a comment about the movie, and also answer the following question, what two things does Belle give Agatha in the deleted scene? Remember to turn on your notifications to see all my new Beauty and the Beast videos, and to find out if you win the giveaway. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and also check out more of my Disney videos below. Thanks for watching, and see you next time! Yippee-ki-yay, movie lovers!